Rotator cuff symptoms. Does rotator cuff disease affect the patient's sleep quality? The rotator cuff is a group of four muscles, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis. Each muscle has its own function. These rotator cuff muscles are commonly injured or affected. Rotator cuff tears are a common source of shoulder pain. Tears of the rotator cuff may involve a single tendon or multiple tendons. The tear may be partial or complete. The patient may present with a painful, weak shoulder. The patient will complain of gradual onset of pain increased by overhead activity and the pain is over the deltoid area. The patient may have loss of active range of motion of the shoulder. The passive range of motion of the shoulder is usually intact. The patient will have weakness of abduction and will be unable to elevate the arm above 90 degrees. And if you inject the shoulder with lidocaine, there will be no improvement of the shoulder movement after injection, and that is called pseudo-paralysis. Always check the range of motion of both shoulders to compare the shoulder movement actively and passively. It is the active range of motion of the affected side that will be limited. 90% 90% of patients with rotator cuff tear complain of night pain, shoulder pain at night. Night pain can mean that non-operative treatment of the rotator cuff tear may not work. It also means patients with rotator cuff disease will have sleeping disorders. If the rotator cuff tear is traumatic, the pain can be acute and associated with sudden shoulder weakness. Sleeping disturbance is a common complaint in patients with rotator cuff tears. The patient with rotator cuff tear may not be able to sleep from the pain, and this usually makes the patient want to go for surgery. So what happens if the patient cannot sleep? Lack of sleep due to pain will have a negative emotional, behavioral, and cognitive effect on the patient, including anxiety, depression, and lack of focus and concentration. If a person sleeps less than six hours for four consecutive nights, the person will have some impairment of cognitive performance. Research also shows that if a person had less than seven hours of sleep every night, then that can be associated with obesity, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, and depression. We have to figure out why these people cannot sleep. If they don't get the sleep that they need, this will not be good for them. Is lack of sleep connected to the rotator cuff tear size? These are the classic size of the tears. Small tear up to 1 cm, medium tear 1 to 3 cm, large tear 3 to 5 cm, massive tear greater than 5 cm, or the tear involves multiple tendons. The rotator cuff tears can also be partial thickness or full thickness. So the research found that the status of the rotator cuff does not correlate with the worst pain. For example, if you have a full thickness tear or a massive tear, it does not correlate with the worst sleep quality. So the status of the rotator cuff did not correlate with increasing symptoms of shoulder pain or with the worst sleep quality. If the patient has inflammation of the rotator cuff as an impingement or the patient has partial thickness tear or full thickness tear, they all have the same complaint, shoulder pain 
night pain, and sleep disturbance. Worsening of the shoulder pain and the sleep quality may not be clearly associated with the severity of rotator cuff disease. So some people think that there's another source of pain and that shoulder pain and lack of sleep is not due to the rotator cuff tear because there's a lot of patients have rotator cuff tears and are asymptomatic. Older population has a lot of rotator cuff tears and the majority are asymptomatic. They don't complain about it. Full thickness and partial thickness rotator cuff tears are seen on the MRI or ultrasound in asymptomatic individuals. Its prevalence is over 55% in individuals over the age of 6 years old. The frequency of these tears increases with age. Patients with impingement or partial thickness tear can have the same sleeping disorders. So it seems like the status of the rotator cuff does not correlate with the worst pain. And another source as the cause of pain different than the rotator cuff needs to be identified because the severity of the rotator cuff disease affecting sleeping has not been established. So could it be the sleeping position? Patients usually sleep supine, prone, lateral decubitus, or supine with the shoulder abducted. Sleeping in a supine position has a lower subarachomial pressure than the other positions. Increased subarachomial pressure will decrease the blood flow to the rotator cuff. That will increase the severity of the disease. Clearly, the sleeping position may affect the sleeping quality in patients with rotator cuff disease. And that's why the patient may not be able to sleep on the affected shoulder due to worsening pain that is causing sleep disruption. So the question is, is it an increased pressure in the shoulder that causes the pain and the sleeping disorder? If the subarachomial pressure causes pain at night and lack of sleep, then a patient with a full thickness rotator cuff tear will be able to dissipate the pressure and have less subarachomial pressure with the rotator cuff tear regardless of the sleeping position. Or is it the pressure on the inflamed tissue similar to trochanteric bursitis where the patient cannot lie on the affected inflamed side? It seems like the extent and the type of the rotator cuff tendon damage did not correlate with the pain symptoms or the sleeping quality. There are factors that correlate with the worst sleep quality. Female, depression, obesity, diabetes, low back pain, and cervical spine involvement. We don't know how these factors influence each other or how they influence the shoulder pain and the sleep quality in patients who had different severities of rotator cuff disease. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.